Oh my God, that's hot as hell. Every year my two closest friends, Chuck and Teeny, come and they visit me from Austria. And this year I convinced Teeny to do an episode with me because she makes this next level extraordinary potato salad. And I was going through the ingredients list with her and she said she needs rapeseed oil. And I started giggling because rapeseed oil will kill you. She says, no, rapeseed oil is one of the healthiest oils you can have. And I was like, no, I did a whole episode on rapeseed oil and it's toxic. This is my closest friend Chuck, and he is one heck of a singer-songwriter. You'll be hearing one of his original songs a little later on. Chuck and I go way, way back. We went to high school together. I was the best man at his wedding, and he was the best man at mine. Soon after college, Chuck moved to Austria where he met and married Teenie. We visited them in Vienna almost 23 years ago. And this is my lovely friend Teenie, Chuck's bride. Say hello. Hello, everybody out there. You make, hands down, the most remarkable potato salad that I've ever had in my life. The last time we visited him was 23 years ago, was in Austria. My wife was pregnant with my oldest son, and I was blown away by the culture, the architecture, the hospitality. The, the, everything about Austria was so surprisingly unbelievable because I didn't know what to expect. But the thing I never forgot was your potato salad. She has the best recipe, and we're gonna put it on my playlist of list of family heirloom recipes. Stick around, she's gonna show you how to make that, and you are gonna have the best potato salad you've ever had in your life. Your potato salad is the most extraordinary potato salad I've ever had in my life. I have not forgotten it to this day. What do you think makes it such a special potato salad? First of all, I think you need to have the right potato. And here in America, I find it very tricky to find the, the right potato because you need to have a kind of a waxy potato. And the other trick is you need to slice the potatoes when they're hot. And then also you don't put mayonnaise in there. You put like hot soup in there. Hot soup? Hot soup. You mean chicken stock? Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, sure. And you also don't refrigerate it. So it basically goes from the boiling yeah. pot to a to hand, hand, uh, temperature where we can handle it right. to a warm room temperature right. and that's, or, or even a little warmer than that and that's how you serve it. Yeah, and you Fantastic. let it sit for about half an hour and, uh, and you eat it warm. Right, wow, so all these things make it really, really unique. So let's, let's talk about the ingredient list a little bit, okay? okay. Here's where it gets a little controversial. Right. You you were telling me that you know we're going down the list of stuff so I can buy it because I wanted to make sure that I had very similar ingredients to what you use back home. Mm -hmm. It was a little tricky to get some of the stuff, and then you had mentioned that you use rapeseed oil. Yes, we call it rapsöl in Austria. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I did a video um, about a year ago on the the dangers of rapeseed oil. I don't know if you know this or not, but rapeseed oil was actually used. Um, it was we, the United States imported it from Canada, and they would. It, it had a very unique hydrophobic or hydroscopic uh, characteristic that when you put it on metal, it would stick to the metal and it would disperse the water right away. So it was basically used mm -hmm. to keep ships in World War II from rusting. And then when we no longer needed that oil from Canada, <laughs> we stopped doing business with Canada, and Canada lost a gigantic industry. So what they did was they modified the rapeseed plant to create an edible version of rapeseed oil because rapeseed oil will kill you. Is that the you, same kind of oil that I use in my potato salad? No, no. it's not. It's I'm a different that. type of oil. But here in the United States, we don't call it rapeseed oil. We call it canola oil. I don't eat canola oil, and there's a number of reasons behind that. If you watch, you know, I don't want to rehash that video, but it's all in that video. But one of the main reasons why I don't eat canola oil is because it's usually extracted with chemicals, and usually it's almost impossible to get all of that chemical out of there. The other reason is canola oil is extremely heavy in omega-6 fatty acids, as opposed to omega-3 fatty acids, which are far better for you. Now, why do you want to use rapeseed oil in this recipe? I think it just gives it a very nice and smooth texture. I like the color of it as well. The rapeseed oil that I use is like dark yellow actually. And we've got uh, rapes um, growing all over Austria. Like you get out of Vienna and there's fields all over the place. Big giant yellow fields. Big giant yellow fields, yeah. And also, but does it have a, a distinct flavor? It does a little bit, but it's, it's still quite a, kind of neutral, but a little bit nutty. And it's, it's just really the consistency that makes it like very, the whole marinade just makes it 
Very nice. I am gonna. We're gonna do two types. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna use um, canola oil or the rapeseed oil, which I've actually was able to purchase from Amazon. A true, authentic, cold press rapeseed oil, which by the way has phenomenal reviews as being as touted as being healthier than olive oil in all of Europe. I mean, the websites that I went to said it's one of the best oils you can get, which is interesting because here in the United States. The jury's out. We don't really know if it's a great oil or not. I mean, um, the naturopathic world says keep canola oil away from you as far mm-hmm. as you can. And the medical industry, the American Heart Association is like, oh, canola oil, number one, the best. So wh- what I'd like to do is give people an option. First of all, the rapeseed oil that I bought, the cold-pressed rapeseed oil, was really expensive. We use avocado oil. Yeah. Same kind of thing. It's not as yellow, but it might have the same consistency. So we'll try both and then sure. we'll do like a blind tasting or a tasting and see which one actually works. Yeah. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the potatoes. Like we obviously can't get Austrian potatoes, but you we've made it for me before mm-hmm. with Yukon Golds. Not quite the quality as the Austrian potatoes, but I purchased organic Yukon Gold potatoes, which I feel are going to be very similar to the potatoes that we had in Austria. But I also purchased are you familiar with fingerling potatoes? Yes. Okay, so I bought fingerling potatoes. Let's do two types. Let's make one with fingerling using the rapeseed oil, mm-hmm. one with Yukon Gold using the rapeseed oil, and then we're gonna do one with Yukon Gold with avocado oil. What did you call the green that you put in it? Vogelsalat or Feld, Feldsalat in German. And, and that is also known in the United States as lamb's, lamb's leaf, lamb's lettuce? Yeah, I think so. Or corn salad, right? right? right. It's also known as match. It, it doesn't have much of a flavor, it's more texture. Mm-hmm. You, I would compare it to watercress. I was able to okay. get it. So we'll use that. Fantastic, fantastic. And um, you were also very concerned about the salt. One of the things that you said is the salt in the United States is too salty. Mm-hmm. I fixed that. I, I use Celtic sea salt. It's got 40% less sodium than regular salt. It has an unbel- It's from France. It's got yeah. these unbelievable uh, minerals in it that give it such a unique flavor. And I think this is what we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hit a home run here today. Fantastic. Here are our fingerling potatoes, and based on your recommendations, you wanted them all to be roughly the same size yes. so they could have the same texture when they're boiled. Correct. So let's zero out our scale. How many grams of potatoes do you normally put? Six hundred gram. Six hundred. Okay, so let's add these to there. Let's see what we got here. Do you need one more? That's 1206. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And you just boil them, huh? I just boil them. All right. So I want to try and steam. I'll steam the fingerlings. Go ahead. I find that when you make a potato salad, if you or mashed potatoes, if you steam the potatoes, that extra starch that's in there that would normally get basically boiled out or washed out of the potato, mm-hmm. that starch makes it a little bit more silky. So let's see if it actually tastes silkier. Okay. I use this chicken stock. I get it from, uh, we have a club warehouse here called Costco. It's better than bouillon. It's organic. So I'm going to use this. So we're just going to basically add it to there until we get the right t- taste that we're looking for, That's right? Good. Okay. I recommend you use mason jars because there's going to be a temperature variation here. And to each one, we're going to add one finely minced clove of garlic. And then we're going to add three tablespoons of white wine vinegar. To the one, we're going to add five tablespoons of the rapeseed oil. To the other one, we're going to add five tablespoons of avocado oil, preferably organic, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, a half a teaspoon of sugar, and a half a teaspoon of Celtic sea salt to each dressing. A good amount of fresh ground organic black pepper, about a quarter teaspoon. And then we're going to add 150 milliliters of chicken stock to each container. That's why it's important that it's mason jars so you don't make the glass shatter. Now, a half a cup is less than 150 milliliters, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more to each cup. Then we're gonna give them a really, really good shake. Keep an eye on those potatoes, and you don't want them to be too mushy. You want them to be somewhat firmed but cooked. To the 600 grams of potatoes, we're gonna add roughly a quarter of a red onion. It's plus or minus, it depends on the size of the onion. It also depends on your personal preference. And you're gonna cut them into wedges. Once you cut them into wedges, then you're going to slice the wedges in half. How's that? Perfect. Perfect. All right. So that one's coming off. Those are the steamed ones. You shock them how? By cold water. Under cold water? Yeah. Do you need to soak them in water when you shock them? I don't. Do you? No. 
but you don't want them ice cold. That's okay. the important part. So you want them basically... So that you're able to peel them right away. Yep. Okay, so I'll do the annoying ones. And you could do the... The skin comes off pretty easily. Basically, Teeny, you want me to cut this into roughly four millimeter or quarter inch slices, roughly. Yes. Okay. Great. I do the same with those. And if they're a bit too big, you could always just cut them into half and then... Like half moons. Right. Okay. You said something about wanting to... You said cutting them... You have when to, it's still warm. When it's still important. warm? Yeah. Otherwise, why? They fall apart? They fall apart. Oh, okay, because it stiffens up. Yep. Okay. Do you know that green potatoes... Do you ever hear that, that green potatoes are toxic? What's a green potato? Like, if you get a potato and it's got, like, it's green yeah. like underneath ah, okay. the skin... Yeah. They say that that can kill you. The reason why is because not necessarily green potatoes are not necessarily bad for you. Okay. But they're an indication that there might be solanine in it. I think it's how you call it, solanine. It's that in large quantities will either get you very very sick, mm -hmm. or it will get you. It'll it'll get it'll kill you. Wow, so I think you, I heard about that once. Yeah. You just have to be careful when you see any portion of potato and it's got like a green part to it just cut it out okay and then the rest of the potato is fine okay so it's not like i have to throw the whole potato away nope you just have to throw out that one the green part we're we gonna pour this whole thing in there or are you just gonna eyeball it um i would maybe eyeball it you first. do it then yeah some of that over see i would actually at the moment i would leave it like that soupy because it would definitely soak it up it really? Sure. Yeah. Wow, okay, cool. Because you need to let it stand. Okay. I would let, maybe let it stand for about an hour or so. Okay. And then at the end, you add this lovely lettuce. The match. Mm -hmm. And that, when do you put the onions in? No, I don't like them cut like this. You don't like them cut like that? No, I do like them, oh, sorry. Okay, cool. But like split together. Oh, yeah, yeah, you together. gotta split them up. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Thought you were criticizing my onion technique. Out. Never, George. I was, I was ready to I edit that right out. <laughs> that part would. Right out of there. I'm gonna let that sit up to two hours. Yeah, you don't even need to have it that long because you still wanna have it a bit warm. Look at that, don't it's kinda that. like, it's got already, it it's like a rich yeah. creaminess right? to it, right? Look yeah. how cool that is. It's gorgeous. Okay, yeah. so now we're gonna do the finger link. No, this this one with this, you wanna do the same? Yeah. The same amount of onions, you would say? Yeah, unless you want more in there. Nah, that's fine, keep it consistent. I just wanna okay, keep it consistent. There you go. Get a little leaf on there. Pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Can really see how it's soaking it up already. It is yeah. amazing. It looks good. Why don't you taste this and tell me if you think it needs more salt? It's basically personal preference, right? It is. So, so maybe maybe you should try it. Okay. Well, I, I like this a little salty. Me too. Oh my god. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. How does that wow, that is unbelievable. Here is our biodynamically grown match from, <laughs> this is from Pennsylvania. It's no pesticides. It traveled. It, yeah, it traveled. You just want to cut it in there? Sure, is it it's, washed? It's what, yeah, yeah it's, it, okay. it's, it's bio, it's um, oh, how about if we set a little fire? And you put them in whole, you don't chop them up? No, don't chop them up. All right. You know what you could also do now, at the very end, you could add a little bit of pumpkin seed oil on Oh, the top. yes. She brings me authentic Austrian pumpkin seed oil a little bit every year. Oh, I look forward to it. We like nurture it and cherish it. So that's about it's good. so good, yep. We went back, we added the rest of the dressing, so these jars are now officially empty. It does absorb a lot, so don't give up on it and don't throw out the dressing when you don't, until you serve it. And we also needed a little bit more salt. So yeah. it's really a little bit of a trial and error process, but you have the fundamentals. <laughs> All three of these are extraordinary. I, I, <laughs> oh, this is so good. Fantastic. Guys, I need your honest opinion here. I have three potato salads that Tina and I made. This one is Yukon Golds, and that one over there is Fingerlings. 
And then this one here is Yukon Golds. One of them is made with rapeseed oil and the other one is made with um, avocado oil. We want to try to see if there's actually a taste difference and just let me know if you prefer one of these two more than the other and also if you prefer, prefer the, uh, f the texture of the fingerling or the flavor of the fingerling potato one. Let's just see which one's best. Number one, by far, for me, the pale. Number two, the fingerling. And then a distant third is the darker one. Number one, the pale was my favorite because to me, I have had German potato salad that I like so much. That was the most similar to the, Germ the real German potato salad that I know. The second one was the fingerling and the third was the dark one. I didn't care, it, it didn't have much taste for me. I like the fingerling texture, but I did like the other one, the dark yellow one flavor. I feel like the vinegar really stood out in that. Number one, I like the pale. Number two, I like the fingerling. It had a lot of flavor, but I thought it was a little heavier for a summer potato salad. And the third was the darkish yellow. I agree with you with the, the, the vinegar needs to stand out. The texture of the potatoes, the fingerlings actually, yeah, that's fantastic. It's creamy. The potatoes are so creamy. That's what I remember from Austria, the creamy potatoes. I like the fingerling the best and uh, the second one, the dark one, and the third one, the light one. I thought all three were excellent. Like there was, uh, I didn't feel like, oh, this is so much better than the other one. Um, I actually liked the rapeseed oil better than the avocado oil. I think it had a little bit more, it was a little more creamy, but hands down, the fingerling mm -hmm. yeah. had the texture that I remember when I had in Austria. <coughs> Excuse me. Still, all three, none of those potatoes even remotely compare to the waxy potato, the flavor, the depth, the character, the layers of the potato that we had, uh, that I had in Austria. No words must be spoken. We've said all that we can. I look at you and I see my wonder woman. Promises are broken. You see all that I am. You look at me and you see your Superman as we run, run. Tini, thank you so much for taking the time out to show us how to make this recipe. If you don't give this a try, you're really going to miss out. So please give it a try. Give a comment down below when you do. Let me know if it's the best potato salad you've ever had in your life. Thank you for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you so much.